Right, um, this uh, film was filmed uh, late in the raw and um, the stags uh, weren't roaring because the full moon was uh, uh, about six days away and, uh, and the thick shitty scrub that uh, I'm hunting in, uh, you need them to be roaring to get in anywhere close to them. So um, this guy is pretty good but He's only six years old, and uh, the way he's held, if he's any good, is you just measure his head length compared to his antler length, and he's at least two, maybe two and a half times uh, the um, head length. And uh, uh, he's only eight points, though, so he's not going to score good enough to win the club competition, and really needs another year or two to get into his prime. So I left him. Here he is on game camera footage, and uh, yeah, they see the black uh, forehead, that's what uh, tells me that he's uh, six years old. Uh, and a little more on the deer sign type thing. People will just think it's shit, but um, you see how the grass has been, um, this bit here, you see how it's been pulled out? And you look at all this around here, there's heaps of it where the grass has been pulled down. Now that, I've seen goats do it as well, but this is really a fallow sign. When you see this sort of stuff, it means that the, um, uh, there's fallow stags or fallow uh, deer in the, uh, in the um, vicinity. So, um, yeah, I've seen uh, reds do it as well, but only very, very minor, and um, yeah, goats do it, but they eat the whole lot, so uh, whereas, you know, big piles of the bloody shit here, so um, yeah, that's, that's when you know that there's fellow in the area. Alright, let's play spot the deer. And uh, I saw, I initially saw the one on the bottom right. Um, oh, when I first saw him, I was actually a wee bit further down, and uh, I didn't see the others. But all I saw was a blob of colour. And uh, and uh, when I moved position, when I saw the others, mm. I'm in uh, uh, the lee side wind conditions, and I'm down the bottom of the gully where the, I'm in the unstable. Wind uh, zone. The wind's mainly coming from the camera's 1.30 position, but with uh, uh, back eddies coming from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised I didn't get busted earlier. Yeah, I'm getting busted now. Right, another hunter training thing on how to see the deer. This one's clearly visible. Uh, when you know where to look, you can actually see its head move. But uh, I put this little start loop in twice. So, um, and what you've got to learn to see is a solid block of colour. Because that's what gives it away. You know, see, everything else is very small bits of colour. Uh, whereas the carcass of the, or the body of itself is uh, actually quite solid and um, any time you see that, well, it can be a rotten reamy log but it can also be a deer and uh, you'll hear me bang on about uh, solid blocks of colour and um, that's what you're looking for because a lot of hunters will walk past this one and um, the wind's coming from the camera's 2.30 position with uh, back, good, quite strong back gusts coming up behind me so right at the 6 o'clock position so I was quite surprised that uh, um, I hadn't been busted and there you go busted Uh, this is coming up trying to get onto that stag you saw before. The stag to the right of the camera. And 
Uh, I kept on getting forced up the hill by windfalls and other crap that's in the, in the gully. And so I ended up coming up about 30 or 40 yards too far up the hill. And, uh, I'm trying to see what's over the brow here. See, I pick up uh, the. I actually stood on a bit of grass, and then when the other foot came through, I, I kicked the the grass and broke it. And uh, yeah, that's what alerted these these guys stuck their heads up. Uh, I was having focusing issues because I didn't understand how to use the camera. All I had to do was touch the screen where I wanted it to focus, and I would have stayed focused on the deer and not switch between the deer and the grass in front of it. And. Uh, this is a uh, uh, mother and daughter. Uh, mother's on the left, daughter's on the right. And uh, they, um, they knew something was up, well, at least the, the mother did. The daughter only stuck its head up because the mother, the, the mother did. Um, and in this whole encounter, uh, the, uh, ear, the mother's ear never left me. It's always pointed in my direction, no matter which way that the, the head's pointed, the ear is always pointed in my direction. You can watch their noses and you can actually see them sniffing the ear all the time. And where they're positioned, they're, it doesn't look it, but they're actually on the side of a hill. And uh, the wind is going left to right. And it's actually quite strong. I should have zoomed back out again to, so you can see how strong the the wind was on the top of the uh, uh, tea tree that's behind them. And while it doesn't look like they're in strong wind looking at the grass in front of them, they are actually in quite a reasonable breeze. And where I am just coming straight out of that creek, there's a little bit of back gust coming behind me, but it's very gentle. And as a result, the because the wind's so strong where they are, the gentle breeze has got no chance of getting to them, so they, they couldn't smell me. And uh, if you're faced in a situation like this, you shoot the mother, you can just shoot it in the neck. Uh, don't uh, go for a head shot because uh, it's too easy to wound them. But if you aim for the middle of the neck, um, you've got reasonable room for error and uh, still be uh, good at shooting them. You see how short the nose is of the mother? Uh, that means that the, the daughter is the first offspring. Uh, she's, uh, the mother's not a very old animal. Uh, when they get old, the, the nose actually gets quite a bit longer. And, uh, yeah, so I had quite a good day. It's not always like this. And uh, when you go hunting, you usually only see you know, one or two animals, not a whole heap like I did. Uh, this day. Uh, I wanted to back out of there but I couldn't move because if I moved, even though I was stuck in the, actually in the sh shadow of the tea tree, the uh, deer would have been able to see me move. And uh, so I was sort of frozen to the spot. Uh, I really wanted to sort of go 30 or 40 yards to the right and then come back because that's where the deer was, uh, the stag was. Eventually I turned the, the camera off to save uh, uh, battery and memory. Uh, but uh, the uh, daughter moved uh, directly away from the camera and uh, Hein moved off to the right and picked up the stag and they both disappeared.